Hey folks, how you doing today? And obviously you have power because you're watching this video right now. Although if you were using your cell phone, you'd still be able to watch it, at least till your battery went dead. Today we're going to be talking about power outages and what you can do to be prepared for those type of scenarios when they do arise. And they're going to be arising across this country really soon. We all saw what maybe took place in Texas this past week and how they have issued statements and asking the public to please use less electricity during, during like the peak times. You know, they want you to turn your AC up to 78. They don't want you to use any of your major electronics in your home as far as like a wash machine, dryer, uh, stove, those type of things during peak times. They also, if you own an electric car, they don't want you to charge it during peak times. So what do you do? What happens if the power grid does fail? Our power grid is very, very fragile, folks. A lot of it is real old and it needs to be updated which is going to cost billions and trillions of dollars to reach a point to where it can handle the amount of people that are drawing off the grid itself. Now, you throw in people want to buy electric cars, which take a lot of power, and the grid can't handle that. And see, the people with the Green New Deal... They don't want to hear that. You know, folks, if you think about it, all right, we're not set up for what they want to do with the Green New Deal and how they want to push that agenda and everything else. Changes are good if changes are done properly. Let me give you an example. Cell phones, okay? When the cell phone first came out, not a lot of people are on board. Cell phones cost an arm and a leg. They were really expensive back then. You know, they were the big, huge things. You had to beg phones and you had to put the antenna on top of your car or truck or whatever. Things have come a long way. You know, everybody back in those days all still had landlines. And for you that don't know what a landline is, if you're that young, well, that's where it comes from the pole into your house and you have a phone that you can talk on and it rings inside your home. Unlike where this goes wherever you want it to go, a landline is only good in your home. And back when I was a kid, it had a cord attached to it so you could only walk so far away from wherever the phone was because... That's just the way it was. Nothing was cordless back then. But once they took and they got these cell phones to where they were magical, they got the prices down, worked out all the bugs and everything else. Then we, well, guess what? Landlines are pretty much gone. Some people still need them for different things, but for the most part, People don't have landlines anymore. They have cell phones. And that's what's got to take place with the power grid. Now, something that you really need to think about when you're talking about power outages, a grid going down, and these type of scenarios, it depends on what the situation is, is how long you could be without power. It is, it's a natural disaster as a, in a, a Category 4 or 5 hurricane you could be without power for months before they get that part of the grid back up and running because that is almost like a total rebuild of the whole infrastructure. Now, if it is a short-lived blackout type deal, at that point, you know, it could just be a few hours, maybe four or six hours or something, and your power might come back on. You have to have a plan in place so that you 
can generate power. Now, not everybody can go out and afford to buy something like a Generex, where when the power goes out, it kicks on and it runs your whole house. So it's like nothing's wrong, but a lot of us can't afford that. Okay, they are expensive. If you can, more power to you because they are top notch. So you need to have a generator with extra gas, oil, and an extra spark plug. Just on a chance that you need to change it, something goes wrong, that's what you need. All right, and that'll help get you through a bad situation. Having a battery bank big enough to run some appliances, um, you know, some bigger items in your home besides some lights, some fans, your refrigerator, maybe your freezer, whatever it could be. With battery banks, as long as you have solar panels, you can charge all those type of things and you have an unlimited amount of power. Because more than likely, as long as you have the sun outside and you put those panels in the right direction, you can charge your battery banks and this way here, you always have power. Now, a lot of the solar panels nowadays do have all these different adapters. So you can be charging your battery bank and your cell phone and possibly a flashlight at the same time. You always want to make sure you have flashlights, extra batteries, and all that. If your flashlight takes D batteries, make sure you have extra D batteries. If your flashlight takes Cs, if you have small flashlights for your kids, which I would highly suggest, just makes them feel a little bit better because they have their own little light. So you got to make sure you have batteries to cover all those different types of things. You also want to make sure that you do have some way to cook that doesn't require power as far as electricity. Coleman stove, a gas grill, a charcoal grill, a flat top, whatever it could be, and make sure that you have extra gas for those types of products in an emergency type situation. This way here, it keeps you all safe. It keeps you all fed. So this has just been a little video on some of the power grids and what's taking place because we're going to start seeing a lot more of this as the temperatures rise in this country the grid can't handle it and until we start putting money back into our own infrastructure in this country we're going to be in a world of hurt we're going to go through this time and time again so it's better to be prepared for power outages before they happen than after they happen and you're scrambling around trying to figure out what the heck to do so I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I really do appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends and family. It might just help them out. And this way here, we do everybody a little favor and we get the word out so people can be prepared. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.